Hey guys, Lance here, Best Day of MTB, and you may be wondering, what's up with the GoPro on my shoulder? Anyway, we'll get to that, but first, I probably should explain my voice. Um, yeah, it's gone all croaky. I think I've officially got long COVID now, so I um, haven't made any videos for a few weeks, but we're going to give this one a go, so hopefully I can get through the whole of this thing without running out of puff. Now, I got sent a while back some pretty cool stuff from a company called hsu or happy share up and i will have a link to their website and a description um, uh, below if you want to buy any of these products um, so first up i'll start with this um, this is a set of aluminium poles and pins um, and this is seriously cool i really really like this i've often in the past used um, plastic pins and plastic rods and tried to do things with cameras and invariably the the poles break or they they just won't stay in place these things however you can ratchet up really tight got a little tool here to tighten it with so you tighten that up and that is whoops didn't do it tight enough after it and tighter there we go and once you do that that is super, super tight. That is not going to move. So you can create any crazy angles you like for the, the camera, um, and it, it's not going to move. In fact, I did, uh, I think, one on this helmet. I think I had the pole up here and uh, got some wacky angles on, on that one. I did even, uh, I've got one of these spinny mounts I've had lying around, put a pole, the pole on here and managed to get the old camera spinning around your head uh, again a little bit close up of my face but anyway it's, it's something a bit different but really really like this it's even got a little um, round thing here that you can uh, screw in if I've got this right yep so you can screw that into there and then this thing can be put on top of there and again more more wacky angles you can create now so why the, I guess the question is what's up with this thing why have I got a uh, GoPro sitting on my shoulder and why would I want to do that well let's go back to GoPro mounts 101 okay camera options you can put a camera on the top of your helmet uh, World Cup racers do it all the time they can sit there the, the night before the race and look at their practice footage the downside is the peak is often in the well the peak is usually in the, in the shot often the handlebars are often not um, and the audio is terrible you can put it underneath the visor, marginally better, um, but A, you, you often sometimes get a little bit of visor in the shot, B, often that sits in, in your eye line, and I really can't stand to look and have something in my eye line. And even worse than that, if you know our good friend Lindsay, he managed to crash, land on his head, and the GoPro nearly sliced his nose off, so something to think about. So that leaves the two main views being your chest mount or your chin mount. I used to use a chest mount a lot. It's quite good because you can see a lot of the handlebars in the shot. Um, the downside is it's shakier than a chin mount because your head axe is a natural gimbal. And also, the thing I like the most about this is that when I, wherever I'm looking, if I stop and turn my head to, to talk to someone next to me, I'm filming whoever I'm looking at. And so that's seriously cool. So, the shoulder mount. Well, I guess it kind of does a similar thing. If you're not wearing a helmet, if you're doing a sport that doesn't require a helmet, you're getting that shot near you, you're getting good audio because you're, talk you're talking near the camera. Um, so, works pretty well for, for that. I did uh, try a few, in fact, I even tried uh, putting a pole um, on, on here to get some wacky angles as well. And it's not just, you can use this not just for a shoulder mount. In fact, I'll take it off and I'll, I'll show you in a bit more detail. So it's pretty well made, uh, pretty solid plastic, um, comes with these long straps. In fact, it's a little bit confusing to put on. There is some instructions on their website that d does help a little bit. But yeah, it's not really obvious how you strap this thing up initially. It has an extension if you've got a big gut like mine and you need to get around it. This thing here, you can unscrew it and almost position it in any angle. In fact, you can position this in, in these different positions as well. And when you do this thing up, this part of it is rock solid, so that is not moving, so that's pretty cool. Did put a camera up higher up, although the downside is you do tend to get like a really close up shot of the side of your head, and I don't know that that's a good look. I didn't, didn't really like that, so I tended to have the camera facing forward away from me, and I needed to get it reasonably away from me so that, especially if you had a, a helmet on, your chin didn't actually hit the camera. In fact, I think it's better with this, not to have um, a full face helmet, to have an open face helmet, certainly. You can do other things with a camera though. You can do a chest mount, you can stick it kind of there, strap it around you, literally 
position that however you like and so now you've got a, a chest mount as well and I did get some reasonable footage um, with a chest mount in that position I did also try a hip mount a um, bit of an unusual angle maybe not for everybody um, but again something a little bit different the one that I was most happy with though was actually I stuck it on my back and strapped it onto my back and old Zach followed me and we got some footage of him following me and I think I've actually got the best backwards facing footage with this camera. Um, normally on the back of the helmet often you can get your back in there especially if you're wearing a backpack uh, whereas this thing nice and low down looked pretty cool so I was pretty happy with that. So do I strongly recommend this? Am I going to use this all the time? Is this my now go to mount? Probably not. I did have some issues with it and I'll explain those. Um, although this thing is really rigid and really, really strong and I was like super happy with that, the, the, the mount itself is easy for it to slide forward. And so if you've got it sitting on your shoulder and you go over a drop and a jump and it drops down, it doesn't need to move very much before suddenly the camera is now facing too low. And this is um, one thing you've probably all noticed and, and I'm guilty of it myself, is that POV footage, in my opinion, you should almost be seeing what the cab, the, um, the rider is seeing. You should almost imagine you're riding down the track. And if you, you can see the bike and the handlebars and the front wheel, that's great. But if you're constantly almost trying to tilt your head up and like to try to magically make the camera point upwards, you've got it wrong. And so a lot of the footage that I got with this thing started off good, but then dropped down and I was end up looking at the ground. And I did get a little bit frustrated with that. So I think the shoulder mount would be good if you were walking and you wanted your hands free and you wanted to film what you were looking at i think that would be quite good for that um, if you were riding on the road or just riding on gravel paths but if you're doing jumps and drops and gnarly rooty stuff it's it's just not stable enough to stay in one place to get good footage so yeah i think i might play around with it a little bit but it's not going to be my go-to mount I'm still going to stick with my um my chin mount i think is my number one mount um, Hopefully you found this video uh, helpful. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, I'd love you did. If you did that, you never know, it might help bring my voice back. Um, love hearing your comments. I'll certainly try and answer them all if I can. And um, hopefully we'll see you on the trail soon with um, with my voice back. We'll see you then.